Good afternoon and welcome to Art Toronto and thank you for joining us for our platform uh, series of talks. We would like to begin by acknowledging the land that we are meeting on is traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and we are grateful for the opportunity to gather here. I'd now like to introduce Rui Amaral, who will be doing a short introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for, for coming. My name is Rui Mateus Amaral, and I am an adjunct curator at the Museum of Contemporary Art Toronto. I'm also the director and curator of Scrap Metal, a private not-for-profit exhibition space also in the city. Today, I have the honor of introducing Carlos Bunga, an artist whose practice I've been following over the last five years and whom I will be supporting on a two-part multi-level exhibition opening on February 5th, 2020 at MoCA. At that time, the museum will also open projects by Sarah Z, Megan Rooney, and Shayla Keeley. For the first time since opening in fall 2018, all of the projects in the museum will be set into a loose dialogue with one another, each one addressing the current state of things by way of constructing, undoing, and reworking physical systems. We look forward to realizing this dynamic program and welcoming you to these experiences in the new year. Carlos Bunga was born in 1976 in the city of Porto, Portugal. He currently lives and works near Barcelona. His work was recently featured in group exhibitions at the Guggenheim Bilbao, uh, Arts Mundi 6 in Cardiff, and the Chicago Architecture Biennial. He has also had solo exhibitions at numerous museums, including Hammer Museum Los Angeles, Museo Sahalj in Porto, Museo Universitario de Arte Contemporáneo in Mexico City, Museo Amparo in Puebla, House Constructivic in Zurich, and the Museo d'Arte Contemporáneo de Barcelona. Most recently, Bunga presented a survey exhibition of his work at the Museum of Art, Architecture, and Technology in Lisbon. Bunga's upcoming exhibitions in 2020 will take place at Whitechapel Gallery in London, MoCA, and the Secession in Vienna. Please join me in welcoming Carlos Bunga. I was a nomad. Forced by circumstances of life, and when I grew up, I remained a nomad but voluntarily. For many years, I lived in different houses, traveling continually from one place to another. The most important is not the physical space, but the nomadic in the agility of mind. Um, sometimes when the people ask me what I'm, what I'm doing, uh, all times I have the same, the same answer. Sometimes I'm a painter, sometimes I'm a sculptor, sometimes I'm an architect, sometimes I'm a poet, sometimes I'm a farmer, sometimes I'm an anthropologist, sometimes I'm a scientist, sometimes I am, sometimes I am. Sometimes I am. Um, things, goals around life. I like the feeling of being able to take a pen and draw the universe. A place, a place where I can project ideas that navigate my mind. My work was developed around the day of home city of architecture and explore mental space. Uh, in 19, uh, 1983, the Portuguese government 
was built houses for the poor Portuguese families. The construction of these social houses was made with prefabricated material. In 2002, the, the, the houses were demolished because they advanced state of degradation. I tried to preserve the memory of this house by making a model made from uh, empty uh, cereal box. Um, I have tried to make a detailed description of the house using the memories I have stored inside myself. My first house was a woman. Uh, I love this idea that the, the bill of a woman was my first house. Probably the first house of, of everyone. Um, in 1975, among the many displaced, fugitive, and persecuted by the Herman conflict of Angola, his independence from Portugal, uh, was my 70 years old mother, a few months pregnant, trying to, the, trying to escape the war to save my two years old sister. The, the, the dramatic and violent situation outside of the space contrasted with the protected space of the belly where was where I was living. Um, in Portugal, uh, the north of Lisbon, have a fort, is a Polish fort that functioned about from the 40 years. Uh, was one of the most emblematic political person in Portugal at the time of the dictatorship between uh, 1978 and 1983. The former political prison was used for, as the refugee center of the former Portuguese colonies for five years. Upanaraven arriving at the fort, the refugees and returnants born with mattresses that had the blood and hair of the tortured prisoners, preferring to sleep on the floor. Only with the passage of time, I realized that our house, a cell without key, had been a prison. No doubt, life at the prison was more difficult for adults than for children. <coughs> Penis was um, a city in the north of Lisbon and was been and is a kind of a, a city for fishing, a fishing town. It was impressed me the fish trap used for fishing. In Penis Forts, we felt that way. I like fish, like fish in the net without being able to uh, to live. With this childhood experience, I always try to dedicate myself to think about tomorrow. Try to find a future that called transcendent, transcends nationality or ideology. Like nature, city is organic and in, con in constant state of transformation. In this drawing, I uh, have this, this frog, and I love the idea that uh, the, uh, the, the, in this drawing we have this little house, and how the house, the, from the house, the, this little house, and how this house goes to grow up and transform in this uh, monster, in this big city that uh, is alive. Uh, the architecture becomes part of our senses, a kind of fiction that becomes integral part of our reality. Uh, I have always problems with the, the architecture. Uh, I always make uh, reflections about that space. I think the architecture has that capacity to press in the people. Uh, one idea that I don't think is real, is one utopia, is one projection, but one is not total, uh, a real idea that strong, uh, powerful uh, monuments in uh, that uh, change our sensibilities. Um, at this po um, in this image, uh, in the center of that image where the building burned, uh, I, gave, I gave the title of this image, uh, Conscience. We, live with, we, live, we have that obsession about uh, eternity, we are, are afraid to be uh, amnesic, panic of losing the memory. 
losing the archive. I'm interested in the temporal and emotional and intuitive aspect of space. The site specific projects are done without plans or models, a kind of scale model giving new possibilities of understanding the space. Because that, it's essential the direct confrontation with the space where the process has a great importance. Normally I work without plans, without drawings, is a, a straight confrontation between my body and in the space. Uh, sometimes it's quite difficult also for the museums to, to understand that process because that means the, the institution need to accept the risk, need to accept that, 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 that aspect about laboratory and accidents and it's and it's a kind of a balance that between me and the situations we need to find uh, when I make this uh, this performance. My performance when I collapse my buildings, I make this kind of accelerated temporality of the objects and my performance are influenced by the uh, Gutai group, a collective artist from Japan who emerged from the terrible experience of the second world to create new experience by dissolving the boundaries between art and life. The frustration, I still painting, and uh, I have a very big, big frustration when we talk about painting in a very traditional way. That frustration I felt with the two-dimensional two support of painting led me to destroy the medium with my body, trying to bring to the work the three-dimensionality of space. This desperation associated with an intimate engagement with the city and its demolished gentrification or destroyed buildings helped me to help me to expand it, the physical limitation of painting. Normally for my work the people when people talk about me, talk about cardboard. Uh, and uh, normally I say that I use cardboard but I don't talk about cardboard. Uh, one day, uh, I sit in the, in the table with a paper and I write that sentence. I use cardboard, but I don't talk about cardboard. I write that sentence so many times that no more space in the paper I have. Then I continue to write that sentence in the table, in the chair, in the walls, in the windows, in my eyes, in my intestines. Cardboard is just a medium of appropriate, uh, appropriate concepts like memory, time, impermanence, or stories, or story, among others. Cardboard can be also a metaphor of this society in permanent state of liquid. Uh, also, the cardboard is something that has this relation with this uh, capitalist society, a relation with uh, 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 everything what we consume, what we eat, and it's something that we can put in the trash. It's a very banal material. And uh, I like to, to work with this very banal mat material and to make something with it. The transition from painting to sculpture came when I started looking for the ruin building spaces that specially resembled my paintings. And I hang the works on the walls so they will be exposed to the weather. I want to see uh, I want to see how they will decay with the passage of time. When I put a painting in space, the painting became invisible. What that means, this is some point we can talk about the ready-made, that we talk about the very banal object and put in the white cube and we isolate that object for the reality. But the inverse gesture is to put that uh, object in the, in the context, and that context put that, in, that object very kind of invisible, because it's part of that, that, that space. And, um, and uh, after that experience with my paintings around the city, I tried to materialize the idea of ruin, fragility, using simple materials such, uh, such like paper, cardboard, and plastics. In this period, I found, I found Gordon Mataclar, that is one of the artists that I, when I found it, I stopped working. I've been in shock, 
because I thought that bottom art track really worked in something that I'm looking for. And then I study his work, and then when I understand his work, I continue work about what I'm, I'm looking for. And I look the city like a model that, that can be manipulated and molded. I think we live in a city, and I really think we are very vulnerable when we're in that space. To be able to transform, and I love the idea to be able to transform the objects with the concativity of my hands. I love the idea that with the hands we can touch the objects, we can transform, and we can uh, put that in another, in another, in another step. Um, I also, I am also interested in furniture. I love creating interferences and fissures in the functionality and symbology of uh, objects. I like to act on objects by, modifi by modifi modifying them and how at the same time modifying myself, creating a relationship of subject and object. There are objects such as table or chairs where I incorporate structures of different shapes in order to create fissures in their story, identity or functionality. When I intervene in that, in that, in that pieces, I feel I'm extending my body through my hands in, that, in the object so as to resist preconceived ideas about its nature and experience of every, every life. In this image, we have this table. I, make, I said a table, but I start to look, I think. I don't think it's a table. But it's a table that I put the title, The Lady. And in, on top of the table, we have this construction. This is a table. How we can react with that new identity? What is the functionality? This is a painting. This is a sculpture. This is an installation. What kind of reality is possible to create when we look for that, 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 that situation? In Catalonia, I live in Catalonia, in Spain, and they have a traditional event that is the Castellés. And that, I think, is a perfect expression of uh, ephemeral architecture. Women towers supported by the fragility of bodies that act among themselves, the metaphor of public space. We not only live in the space of the city, but are an integral part of its ecosystem. Our bodies are inserted in the urban landscape. Architecture are spaces created for people. Without them, their spaces are a ghost spaces. It's, it, if the people uh, can be together and with the bodies, they can create these buildings, Woman buildings, and this is quite uh, impressive. Uh, always, this these events normally in the summer. The people make this in the street. I love the idea that everybody can participate in the uh, in the uh, there. Everybody can participate to to make a kind of a support with the body, with with this uh, event, and then the people on top of each other create this uh, woman tower. Women architecture also, and these castellers, I think, have this relationship with the insects and how they organize themselves to build a community. Cardboard is also strongly related to nature and process. For the first time, uh, thanks to the invitation of the Watermill Center in Long Island, um, I decided to abandon the comfort of the exhibition space to be in the studio in order to dialogate with nature. The installation reflects the geographic and temporal condition of its location. The working hours for the installation were marked by the sun, sunrise and sunset. Uh, the characteristic of earth, vegetation, fauna, as well as the intermittent wind and rain all contributed to the configuration of this piece. 
my way of thinking is expanded field in painting. This is a, a intervention, the Hammer Museum. I call landscape. Normally, uh, for makeup projects, I make uh, the first travel. Uh, here I have the same feeling. The view for the plane from Los Angeles gives me that perception was that is a very big city. I have the same perception about uh, Toronto. It's my first time in the city. Uh, in the plane, I be, I, for me, been very impressive with the scale of the city. I came from Europe. Uh, Portugal, uh, Europe is small cities, the United States and Canada, it's, the scale is much bigger, and it's quite impressive. In uh, Hama Museum, I call this, this project uh, landscape, and I love to use the concept about landscape in this, uh, in this intervention the, in, the, in, the, in the space. Painting is directly or indirectly present as a process in all my work. A multifaceted place full of layers, perspective, colors, or smells. On this organic and emotional surface, the picture is associated with the idea of skin. In my work, uh, it's very important the presence of body, the body. My body, the body of the people working me, and the body of the people who came inside of the exhibition. Uh, the body always is present. The here and now is really important in the piece. Um, it is a work that exists and activates when the public interact, interacted, interacts with the work. The body uh, must move and feel alive. I love the idea that these pieces that people feel alive. I really feel frustration if we ha can be in one of the installations or when we can look for a normal painting in the wall. And I have the same sensation when we go to the cinema. When we look at a movie in the cinema, our body goes away. We don't feel. It's like a ghost without nothing or brain, or observation, look to the image. But the sensation that the body not react, we forget the body, is something that I think many times you have the same sensation when you look a kind of, a, some pieces like paintings in the wall, uh, some pieces that is very formal. And I love, and because that I, I love the idea to make these kind of pieces that the people can be inside the pieces. It's important to be inside of the pieces because in that moment the public activates the pieces, the piece. In that moment the piece looks sense, the piece activated and something happened. In my pieces, uh, when I go to the spaces, the original space before uh, work in the space, I thought that is a kind of a past with the story, with the memories. My interventions, this cardboard construction, that could be a kind of a big model in the space. Could be a future, is a kind of a projection of one idea in the space. And when we go to the space, we are the present. Our body is the present, and we have a temporal experience between past, future, and present. The surface of my paintings and works are like skin. The sensation that our eyes become the lenses of a microscope that looks like very closely at the surface where we can observe the imperfections of space. I love the idea that my, the surface of my works don't have maquillage. The maquillage is something that we make for to don't see the, the imperfections. I love the idea that this work don't have a maquillage. And is like, and the, being there in a very natural way. I often feel lost in my paintings also. I try to keep going in this place and the non-place, comfortable and uncomfortable. The spanning field of painting is a place, a place that generates doubts, questions, and also emotions. Some pieces uh, we can navigate in the planes of colors suspended from the ceiling to create a sequence of polychromatic environments. The hanging uh, skin. 
these words that I started to make in 2018 are strongly related with a sculptor. Far from the wall, um, we can circulate around them. The front and the back are equally important. Our society is a nomadic space. The follows of people, technologies, uh, which are so pronounced in your time, make me think about the transforming of things. And in that sense, I feel that I'm a nomadic. I think that everybody is a nomadic. I think we live in a nomadic society with a lot of complexities, with a lot of contrasts. Uh, sometimes people could be uh, a little bit uh, make questions about uh, the, when we talk about artworks and uh, when we talk to some words like installation. When we talk like about painting, sculptures, jarrings, it's quite, uh, how I would say, uh, comfortable. But installation, it's a kind of word that is more complex. The words, it's simple, but the, the form, it's complex. Always, what I want to tell is always we try to put names and to put everything, also the most complex and abstract things, in a very simple way. I really believe that if, for this moment, for the right here, a ovni, we could be scary. Sometimes if someone can make something that don't look sense in this space, we can be scary. At some point, we have that pressure about social engagement. We have that pressure when we look for the, all the objects and realities. And I, I love the, always the idea that I feel nomaded. But I don't think that nomadism could be only a physical space. I, th I think the powerful about nomadics is the nomadic about the capacity of we think and look for the reality. One of the things that I really love, the movements that I really love, and I think it's a really revolutionary movement, is the cubism. The capacity of to look for one uh, object with a different perspectives, sensations, and, uh, and the textures. And always I have this, this uh, uh, that journey to make f uh, questions and uh, thinking about, about space. This image is in New Jersey. Uh, for a long time, uh, I've been lived like a nomadic. I've been to travel too much. Uh, I have friends when I, after the art school, I started painting after, after the art school, that start to come the art fairs, uh, sell pieces. Uh, and in my case, it was total different. My work being very difficult for the beginner to come to the, the markets. And I tried to find a solution for to survive with that work. And that, and, and that question for, was very important uh, to make a lot of artistic residences, grants, grants. Uh, and uh, I remember that when I, I received one uh, when one situation accepted me to one artistic residence, I was so happy because the pressure about the market was a little bit away and I get time for think about the concepts, time for to look for that country, to learn. And at some point I think our society goes so fast and you and we are looking always for the, the so fast results about reality and results about our uh, perspectives in, in life. I think it's important to be more slowly. I love the idea that I've been in New York. I've been in New York for two years, uh, in 2005 and 2007. And uh, in that moment, I'm very stressful, because the city is very stressful. Uh, I remember to live in Brooklyn and take the subway. And in one point, I was to start to think that how amazing it is the city goes so fast. The subway goes too fast, but our mind could be very slowly. It's a kind of exercise, at some point a kind of a Buddhist exercise. It's a kind of, at some point, to find a balance 
And it's a very fragile balance, a very delicate balance. And at some point, I think it's something related to it, uh, with life. My installations are also many times what is inside. Uh, I don't make color. I love the idea about inside and outside. And uh, I love the idea that my work talks about house. And I really love the idea also that my house has no doors or windows. My house uh, don't have stairs or ceiling, no tables, no chairs. My house is the ones that I love. Thank you. I'm going to start with, oh, no. you go ahead. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I would like to know your opinion. How do you see yourself and your art in many years from now? So how do you see yourself, if it is possible, because for what I hear, you live in the present, but uh, if you will extend that, how you would see yourself in many years from now, yourself and your art in the world? Thank you. That is an interesting question. Uh, many times in my work, I always put emphasis, not the cardboard, because I think today we, we can use many kind of different materials, because it's a medium for you to make something. And uh, I think uh, when I look for myself in the past, for example, for me, art and what I'm doing, being very kind of a therapeutic uh, phenomenon in my life. I really think at some point, we, everyone, if we talk about traumas, I think everybody, the most big traumas came for our childhood at some point in many different ways. I think, I think that beginning of life is a life where put ours a kind of a very big tattoo and we need to find the way how we need to look to the future, how we need to look to the tomorrow and how we can in some point uh, make reflections about ourselves. In some point art for me, for the beginner, help me a lot because when you use vision painting you don't think too much, but you, at some point, something comes from you, and you project that energy, and that, uh, that inconscient things on what you're doing, at some point. And uh, I love to think in myself when I look to the past, in the sense that, uh, well, really, the heart, what I'm doing, really transform my personality, transform my person, and also transform the way I look of the city, the people, the family, my daughters. I think it's a kind of thing, life is a kind of a process of maturity. And I think it's very important in some point to, to look the mirror at some point and talk about ourselves. That not means needs to be something very concrete, but at some point is to find a way that we can take all these things that we have inside, outside. When I look to the future, I have a lot of questions. I don't know exactly uh, what I can, what, what I will be. I mean, I think the future always is a, is its projections at some point. Uh, I love, I love the idea that I can look to the past, being in the present, that moment. And with that experience, I can project in the future some possibilities, but not the concrete possibilities. It's very open. And uh, in some point, I think that uh, uh, life is a very big process. I love the idea that, for example, in my work, I always put emphasis in the idea of process. I think we live in a society that everything is so concrete, the chair, the table, we don't think too much how 
someone make that option? I think to be pre uh, conscious about the process, how everything is doing or processes, change our perception about reality. Our perception, how we look, not only to the objects, but how we look to the other people, how we look for ourselves. I think the process is really a very powerful and important uh, concept when uh, we think about it. Carlos, it's nice to have a chance to talk face to face because the first time we talked it was with a long distance between us. I was, I'm fascinated to hear you mention cubism. And so you're a nomadic figure carrying a kind of cubist apparatus on his back. He's looking onto a, a cityscape that has a building that looks exactly like Ignacio Etoria, the Uruguayan artist, the white building behind. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder if you feel that the field of possibility for your borrowing is infinite and crosses all kinds of boundaries, but you're not in any sense restricted by where you can look and what you can take inspiration from. Cubism, as we all, is, is often attacked. Mm -hmm. And so to hear you talk about cubism is, is a kind of interesting surprise. So I'm just wondering where you draw ideas from when you're doing more pictorial pieces like this rather than sculptural installations. Mm. Um, I don't know if you understand very well, but uh, um, when I talk about the, the cubism, really, the cubism, it's uh, also the Dada, is another thing that I really love. I really love the idea when, for example, the, when we look for one painting, and if we try to look for that painting in the 3D, and we try to walk inside of that painting, painting have textures, have colors, uh, I like I like this idea about the Dada and the, because Dada was banal objects. The Cubism, I really think it's a very and Picasso. It's really a very revolutionary uh, movement in the sense how we look. In, I mean, in the sense of or in the contrast with the Renaissance perspective. That I think also sit in some point always still to have this very uh, Renaissance perspective. The Cubism uh, reality it's more complex. And for some people, could be a very scary. But I love to be in that space in between. Could be this, could be that. I love the idea, and in my work, in a very proposed way, I work for the micro to the macro, from painting, sculpture, architecture. But this is very conscious, and it's very in a very proposed way. I have problems with the catalogations. I have problems that the people call, at some point, look for my work and said, okay, I get it, it's that. That, I have problems with that. I think things could be most complex, and I, I try always to put my work in that complexity. For example, in the beginning of my work in 2004, 2004 when I participated in the um, Manifesta, the most one of the very important Biennale in Europe, that was, I started the Phoenix University, and then um, I win a prize, whatever. But then uh, the curator, Marta Kuzman, invited to that Biennale. And then I, I found amazing artists. Jan Bott, Mark de Manzala, it was a very great uh, uh, manifesto. And I did for about one month, for a big construction space. And, I, and then in the middle of the process, I decided to make a performance in the day of the opening. And then I give space for the morning for the people being inside of the installation. And when the people start to hear that they want to collapse the building, and nobody really understand why. And nobody really understand why someone who wrote so hard in one piece for about one month and wants to collapse in the day of the opening. Also the creators they are for sure they are saying, yeah, sure, because I think if you talk about time, in the end of the BNL, for example, we go to dismantle that piece. Right? Uh, I love the idea that these accelerate temporalities to accelerate the time in a very proposal way. But I don't think it's like a, a destruction. Actually, the concept about destruction, I don't, it might not be something that I really talk too much. I, I like more the concept about rebirth, renaissance, to give more space for other possible uh, grow up or other possible construction. And uh, and yeah, and and this and in this image, uh, I because New York and because I've been to travel so much, 
I start to make this 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 painting with a picture and on top of the picture in my head I do I make this uh, this painting and then I start to make drawings with the same concept. A body of people with the buildings in the forehead. I love the idea that my work in some point talks about this mental space and this relation between the body, this physicality of the body and this mental space because I think it's very important to be conscious that the space outside, the architecture, the house is really powerful place that change and mold our sense or uh, how we can think. It's really a powerful thing and I really think, I really love the idea that uh, in this picture, and also in some drawing, but in this picture, if you take the, um, the body, it's a kind of a normal building, but with this body, this building have a life, this building is more close to our reality, that fragility. And indeed, I think it's a very important aspect. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you consider your work with cardboard in the museum context uh, a kind of institutional critique um, regarding the art object and the, that valuable art object that's sitting on the plinth. Well, in my, in my, in my work, uh, my work has jarrings, photographies, uh, sculptures. Uh, it's true that the, the big installation, until this moment, any situation uh, take one of these permanently, I think. Uh, we have, uh, I have a great documentation, uh, but the big installation don't have. But I have, a very, I have many problems in my work. That is good problems, because we think about that. And I have a very problem that I think it's a very serious problem. It's, it's a problem about documentation. Not it's only about my work. The idea about the problematic things about the archive, the problematic thing about memory, the problematic thing that we are uh, afraid to lose the memory, to be amnesic. It's a kind of a complex situation. But in my installation, I have a great documentation with the photographers. Uh, in 2005, I started to work with Elba Benitez in my gallery. And she listened very well while I talked, and uh, she, she respected, and we decided until that moment not to like print the pictures and put in the market. And I still, and I give, and that gives space for still thinking about the documentation. I don't have drawings before, but when I finish the, my installations, I make drawings after. What that means? That means that. When I work in the space, I have many problems, limitations, difficulties. One of the most powerful difficulty could be gravity. It's impossible to fly. Then the walls, then the fragility of my body with the architecture, then the cameras, the doors, a lot of limitations. And uh, in the drawing, when I finish my installations, I don't think the installations is already finished. I think it's an open space. And in the drawings, I can be more kind of schizophrenic and is a free space and the installation can continue to grow up. I can break the walls, I can go to the street, I can go to the sky. I think uh, I love the drawings that many times was not a representation about the installation because that I have the photographies, but it's more of a representation about the concept. In this work, one of the most powerful things and important thing is the concept. Try to find the concept. And the concept is what is the base of the work. Then we have the, the physical objects, like the Hammer Museum or Landscape. But for example, the Hammer Museum with the, the name Landscape, the jarrings, I think in that project, any, any jarrings for that project is about the installation. It's only focusing the concept about landscape, the land, the perspectives. And uh, I think it's a kind of a very complex. I think some artists also like Godamata Clark, Christo also, but Godamata Clark, when he uh, take the pictures, put together and put the line of the, when he cut the buildings, in some point he make it, and some point the same. Try to think the documentation and put to, together that pictures for you, put more visible that line when he cuts in the, in the buildings. Yeah.
Are there any other questions? Okay, well, I would like to thank Carlos for your talk, and I would also like to thank Partners in Art who are generously supporting this exhibition and this talk um, as well. And thank you all for coming and giving us your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.